I know that you have a question for me this morning. I do. Thanks for the coffee, by the way. No problem. Oh, you want to go first? I am going first. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Going first because you leaked your question a little bit this morning, like a few minutes ago. Yeah. And uh, I could go along. Uh, I know you could. I know. So I'm going to lead with mine. Okay. Before you lead with yours, oh. I have to do a little bit of housekeeping. Okay. Um, so I had a couple messages from people asking about the junior camps yes. coming up through the summer. Yes. And they're people from out of town. Yes. So my for people that are interested in doing that, for some reason, if you're going to be in the area and you want to come train, um, you can just send me a message through the contact page on the site. And if you qualify based on where you play or your skill level or whatever, yeah. then uh, we'll find it when you're down for whatever the week is or whatever, I can get you guys in for that. If you are playing at an appropriate level for the camps that we have. So if you're interested in doing that, you can go on the website contact page. Let me know when you're going to be around and we can see what we got for you. That's one. Two is workout program is going to be up shortly. Um, and I'm going to start that April 3rd. So whoever gets it can work out on the same schedule that we're working out, which is cool. Yep. Uh, there's going to be demo videos through that whole workout program. So if you don't want the individual coaching side of it, you can uh, just get that. And that will should be adequate, even if you're not directly speaking with me for getting help because there are demos for everything. Uh, that's that. And I think that's all I have to say. At yeah, the, the way you've done the demos on that are very good, too. They're short enough so that you can just get the gist of it. Right. And yeah. then if you have any, if you don't have oatmeal north of the eyebrows, you would probably figure out, oh, I don't have a kettlebell. I could use a weight yeah. or just body weight or whatever. So you can... Right. Navigate through that. It's really, really good, man. That's a really good program. Yeah. It's basically what, no, it's not basically, it's what we do with our players. Yep. Right to a T. So yep. you can have everyday workout, you can have demo videos. It's really, really good. Yeah, I put a lot of time yeah. into it. So I did yeah. I did the best I could with it. And then that's the exact template, like you said, that I work with uh, our guys on. And then if you want or you're interested in having actual like coaching support from us, then if you're a member on the site, you can do that and we'll answer whatever questions you have. But yep. if you don't want to do that, you can just buy the program and do that too. That's fine. So yeah, that's yeah, all I got. Interested. For that. I've got a lot of uh, requests to outside of just the podcast of people that uh, would like to come down and do some on ice stuff. Yeah, and of course cool. do the on ice stuff it'd be, or off ice stuff would be great. Yep. It's awesome. Yeah. So that's it's all I got. Good. You can go now. Yeah. Um, I can go now. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to say this. It's a nice little story that, uh, I didn't want to forget about it. Yep. So it's been haunting me since Charlie was novice, major, haunting, haunting me. In interesting choice of Because when I see a good hockey player, I want to know who they are. Oh, yeah. Good yeah story. Remember I told yeah, you about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. So uh, here's a nice little story. Because typically, you know how we – because I like to give – I like to also – like most of the time when I talk about it's too young to tell when a hockey player is good – and they could fall off and they, you know, you never see them again. We've said that several yeah, times. But it goes both ways. Yeah. 100% it goes both ways. So uh, just because a kid's good when he's young doesn't mean he won't be good when he's, uh, when he's older. So Charlie was in a tournament. I can't remember. I think it might have been St. Thomas, Ontario. Um, and he was a novice major, if that's a such thing, whatever, novice. The year before he went into Adam. So would this have been his first year of AAA? No, no, novice. No, no, it was double A. Oh, he was still double A. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, it was double A. Okay. And uh, they were playing a team, and uh, Charlie's team was like an okay team. No, they weren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing a team, New Market, New Market Redmond, they were called. So this is the 05 group, right? Playing this, this team, and I sat down, and my mother was there, and uh, my wife, and we're watching, and I went, this kid stepped on the ice and go, wow, wow, skated like a pro, made plays like a pro, had hands like a pro. Like, everything he did was a pro. So he wasn't a guy that just could skate around and stuff. Right. And my wife reminded me of this the other day when I told her that, what I discovered. Uh, she goes, "You that was the one and only kid that you said, that kid looks like a pro, plays like a pro. I go, yeah. I said, like, if that kid continues on, he's a pro or some or pretty close, right? He's going to get his school paid for. Yeah. So over the years, I never got the kid's name, or maybe I did at the day, but at the time, but I, I don't think I did. So I was always like, Oh, wow, I wish I would have known that kid's name just to see if he developed. Ironically enough, so that's nine years. Yeah. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. 
And we're sitting after a game the other night in Guelph, and I'm sitting down with Chase Coughlin's parents and uh, um, Jacob McRae's parents, and we're having a meal after one of the games. So we're talking about business and stuff, and I said, hey, uh, to Cog's dad, I said, so you're in construction. We're telling about the business. I said, so where did Jake, how did you end up with the Marlies? And he goes, oh, so we started off playing hockey. We're, we lived in north of Toronto. Uh, so we started off, played novice in uh, Newmarket, and I went, whoa, 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 whoa. So, 05, oh, our kids are 05s. I said, who was the kid? That's what I did. Who was the kid, 05? And he goes, Denver Barkey. I go, like, I'm not finished my sentence. And, the, and, and Nikki, his wife, said, barked it out. And I said, 05, real good. The, Denver Barkey. He was like two, two years better than everybody. I said, Denver Barkey, for sure. They said 100%. He was like, score goals like crazy. He was amazing. So Denver Barkey was drafted this year, first round to the London Knights. So it was just nice yeah, to see cool. a kid develop. And now he's a smaller ki- kid right now in the OHL. Yeah. Very skilled, though. Very skilled, very smart. And uh, he was a first round pick. Yeah. So like a lot of the times, like not to go on a real other tangent, because, but, but it's actually kind of important. When you go to, when, if you're looking at your child play and they seem like they're pretty good, they're not good. And I don't mean that I don't mean that they're not good at all. Right. It means that you need the Denver Barkey to stick out at tournaments like that level a lot of the time most of the times to say that that kid's going somewhere. Right. You know, like so when you're in midget, band of midget, it's the kid that is the best on the ice that you right. go, Holy shit, that's your first round pick. Yeah. Your second round pick. Yeah, for sure. And if you're not if you're if you're if your son is not that, then unless he's doing something real special somewhere else, like in the, in the small area of the game, that's what they look like. Right. The ones that bring you out of your seat and go, whoa. Yeah. So this actually, I'm going to transition this to my question because this actually okay. plays perfect into okay. oh, is it? what my question is. So on, I went to watch the 07s play last night. Yeah. They're up two, two game 2-0 on London right now, which yeah. is sick, so good for them. But we were talking, my mom actually came with me to watch the game, and we were talking oh, nice. about... Um, you know, how can you tell this exact question? How can you tell that a player is good or whatever? And we ended up getting into the conversation about uh, exceptional status and how some kids... Actually, well, this is how it happened. There's, there's an 07 kid from London that's yeah. playing year up right now that's supposed to be like... I've heard, I've heard his name for years. Yeah, so he's... I heard he's, he's really good. supposed to be this phenomenal player. I haven't seen him play, but that's the word on the street, yeah. as they say. So... Yeah. That led us into t- talking about the idea of exceptional status. Yeah. And to your point, you're ta- my mom was asking me, so how can you tell that a kid's th- that good? Like, what is, why would they be exceptional status? Yeah. And I said, to the, I said to my mom, it has to be exactly what you said. Like, they are so far beyond good that they might have a chance at that kind of recognition. Yeah. Right? So far beyond. It's not just a kid that's really good or a kid that gets all the points or the kid that leads the league in points or whatever. It has to be far and away something different about this person. You know, yeah, you're not just pretty good. No. Yeah. So I wanted to get your thoughts on this because we were going back and forth on the idea of exceptional status yeah. and whether or not that is a, it's a necessary thing. And I'll give you my two cents before I throw it to you is yeah. to me, it seems like a, the exceptional status thing is more of just a marketing thing where it, it's uh, it's cool for people to hear that someone went exceptional status. They want to look into that person. It sells tickets because the kid's exceptional status. But in terms of the benefit to the kid or the reason, or or are they? Is it necessary that they play a year earlier yeah. or whatever? I don't really think that it is. I think it's more just like it sells. It's it's a cool story and whatever when a kid's that good. But I want we so we talked about it back and forth. But I want to get what you think on it. Yeah, excellent. Uh, can you mark down the word marketing for me? Marketing. Yeah, yeah marketing. So I want to go back to that because there's something I wanted to kind of touch on when you said when you mentioned this this morning. Yeah. So <clears throat> exceptional status. If you would have asked me this last year, exceptional status, I would have said no, no chance. That you don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. That's what I would have oh, said. Oh, I like this because yeah, we might I would have said no chance. Well, it's it's about being open-minded. And, and yep. see, the thing is in, in everything, but in hockey too, until you, you know, until you taste a banana, you don't know what it tastes like. Yeah. I can't describe it, right? Until you're, you're in the fight, you have no idea. So 
and I've tr- and I've directly worked with two exceptional status players, one being Aaron Eckblad, the other one being Sean Day. Yeah. All right. And I don't know if it I don't know if it's necessary, but right. the the rule is you have to apply. There's an issue I have right there. You have to apply to get exceptional status, and the th- the the I guess the ruling, I guess the term would be that you would have no benefit playing at youth hockey any longer. There's just no benefit. Yeah, like it's, so, you're too good that it wouldn't develop you anymore. Right. Right. So that so that we move on. So that I've got a whole bunch of issues here. So as I said, if you would have asked me a year ago and before, I don't know if it was uh, necessary. And my thought back then, even though Aaron was one of the guy that I worked very very closely with. Uh, when he got it, I was like, okay, cool. But would it hurt him to play midget one more year? I don't think so. Right. Um, because what would happen in midget if he played, he would totally, totally dominate. Is that bad? Like they say, bringing an NHL player up, it's never, never a mistake to let a guy play in the American League for one more year. It's never a problem. Mm-hmm. Said that they're ready, ready, ready. Right. Um, so I would say like, especially back then, and I'm, I'm still more on board with this, that I don't think it would hurt a kid to play one more year of, of midget. Okay. Mm -hmm. The, the one flaw in the system, like I would say the hockey Canada, Canada system is that everything's almost like a blanket, right? Yeah. They don't let players that should be playing minor midget play junior B or tier two. Right. And to me, someone that is 15 years old would it would serve them a lot better or wouldn't hurt them. Let's say it this way. Maybe not better, but it wouldn't damage them as much. Or the level of hockey should be better than midget, and it's another step. It would be like the that's American right. League, League of Junior. Yes. And I think that's a gap in youth hockey or minor hockey, Hockey Canada, that – makes the the Canadian Hockey League make decisions like that and and find the exceptional status. Right. You got something to say. Well, it's, it's it get, turns into a complicated issue now because yeah. when we get into like right now there's an issue with for example in junior not the OHL. Well, I think in the OHL too, you're only allowed to have so many 16-year-olds. Yeah, I think you can only dress four in a in game. the OHL? Yeah. And you can only have two in junior B. Right. And so they're trying to keep... 16-year-olds, not, six, not exceptional. Right, 16-year-olds. Yeah. So the only reason I'm saying this is because they're incentivizing people to stay in minor hockey. Like, yes. they don't want all the good players to go. Yes. So that throws, like, another wrinkle into this problem where they're yes. not even letting kids... The best kids don't necessarily play Junior B because some That's of them right. might end up having to play yeah. U18 just because yeah. they don't have a card yeah. for that kid. Yeah. So that's one issue with that. But the other thing that I was thinking when we were discussing it to your point, what's the benefit of them going up a year earlier? So the way that I was phrasing it was, if I look at all the guys that I, in my time, that have been exceptional status, it was, first was uh, Tavares. Yeah. And then... Spezza did it before it was called exceptional status. Oh, he did? I didn't know that. And my friend Danny Gratton did it before it was called exceptional status. They They played played early. They were young, yeah. Okay, so then Spezza as well, but... Actually, we can use Spezza too. So Spezza, um, Tavares... Then Eki, Sean Day, McDavid. McDavid. So of all those guys. Oh, well, and then Joey Valino in Quebec. And then. Uh, Connor Bedard. Connor Bedard. Right. So those guys still remains to be seen. But if I, the guys that are still playing in, yep. in the WHL. Yep. But for, if I take Ekblad, Sean Day, McDavid, Tavares, Spezza. If I look at who is going to be a Hall of Famer. Of those guys, maybe McDavid, right? Still early, but McDavid could be. I don't think probably the way he's going, right? I don't think. Yeah, it's still early. It's still early. I don't think Spets is not going to be. Um, probably not. Maybe I don't know. I, I have a hard time with that. To me, again, that's something I don't. Care no, okay, about. but the only reason I'm saying yeah. the Hall of Fame thing, and this is not to say like Aaron Ekblad is one of the best defensemen in the NHL right now, yeah. but is he in the same conversation as Bobby Orr as a defenseman? No, no. So. Are they one of the greatest of all time? No. So of the, like Sean Day doesn't even play in the NHL. Right. So it's like these guys that got this exceptional status thing, it's not an indicator that they're going to be one of the best players of all time necessarily, right? So it's like 
what is what's the actual purpose of this exceptional status yeah. thing you know yeah. and to me it goes back to the marketing, marketing thing yeah. it's a, it sells and again i'm not taking anything away from mcdavid ekblad sean day spets not obviously they're all they're all good players and for especially for for Ekblad because he's having such an awesome year right now. He's clearly one of the best defensemen in the NHL right now. Yeah, he's a, he's 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 hit his uh, the most points he's ever had so right. far. So it's he's like awesome. But but is he Hall of Fame would be like the exceptional status yeah, of the I, NHL kind yeah, of thing. But I don't know if that's what the purpose is. I think it's I, I I don't know if that's what the measuring stick is at all. It's just I think it's they're so good in youth hockey that they just can't. The, the argument is that they just they need to play at a higher level. NHL, there can't be an exceptional because they're 18. It's a it's a uh, workers or whatever you call that workers. Yeah, you need uh, to be an adult. Labor labor laws yeah. or whatever. So I think that's why they have it. But um, I get, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that. But I'm just my my thing is what it, like there is I don't see a benefit. Like what benefit did Ekblad well, get that okay, he played so, exceptional okay, status? And this is right? where I wanted to go with that. Like, yeah. So like that's why I say I may have changed my mind a little bit. I, okay. I, I, yeah. yeah. I was dead set against it before. I wasn't. I wasn't necessarily dead set against like a kid playing up because he was so good. Like I mean, it's good. So that gap of not playing junior B or tier two beforehand, I think that would fix it. And then what would fix it more? I just don't understand it. Is when I played. So in the eighties, the draft was for seventeen-year-olds. So you had to be seventeen, with the exception of three rounds. Or five rounds, and they changed it to five rounds at one point, where you could take sixteen-year-olds like as they are drafted now. So I was drafted as a sixteen-year-old in a seventeen-year-old draft. In my personal opinion, the the Ontario Hockey League or the CHL is not like I, I have a hard time, and I'm not a scout, so these guys are good. They are good, but there's a ton of mistakes, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. yeah. So I don't know how you could tell a fifteen. 15, 16 year old kid. Like, I don't understand why we can't just take it, let them play major, major midget. Like, so if you want to keep minor hockey really kids in minor hockey, you give everybody that one extra year of yeah. playing and hope and training and all that stuff to say, I got 17 years old is my draft, draft right. year. Right? Yeah. And most kids aren't making the OHL until they're 17, anyways. There's only a couple of kids a team, maybe, that go in as a 16 year old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's to me that would help minor hockey or youth hockey as we, as they call it in the states. If you kept the draft at 17 years old and only had a couple rounds of 16 year olds, that would that would be good. The major midget would be good. So that's my solution to it. And then open up a couple spots for uh, junior B tier two for the 16 year olds that are exceptional. Right. So that's mine. Now, when it came to the exceptional status, there's some guys that have developed really quick, and was Aaron Ekblad ready to play in the OHL at 15? Clearly. Yeah. Was Tavares? Clearly. Was uh, um, McDavid. McDavid? Was uh, Connor Bedard? Clearly. Clearly physically ready to play there. Was was Sean Day? He was probably a better skater than most of them, but clearly not ready for exceptional yeah. status. And there was reasons, which I won't go into today, why I think that he got it. Sorry, was, was Shane Wright exceptional status? Shane Wright was another yeah, exceptional yeah, yeah. status. Forgot about him. Right. So and and so here's my point. Like Shane Wright's actually a good example of what I want to talk about here. My issue, my biggest issue about exceptional status was at 15 years old. Are you mentally ready, mm-hmm. emotionally ready, socially ready, ready for what's in the dressing room, ready for all the stuff that comes in hockey? Because when things are going on, it's not. No one says, "Oh, he's 15." That is my biggest issue. Yeah. The other issue I have is, as a parent, why do you want your son to move away at 15 when he could be at home for one more year? And is that one more year of not playing in the Ontario or the Canadian Hockey League going to make a difference of you making the NHL or not? I 1,000% think absolutely not. Right. 1,000%. Having said all that... Where I've changed my mind, or not changed my mind, but where I think it's the mental side of it is is not as bad as I thought, is uh, if w- here's what they do: they when they when you apply for exceptional status, they take you through psychological evaluations, and I thought at first, yeah, what are they really saying, you know? But I think they probably make some pretty good decisions. 
So looking at Charlie being, you know, pretty mature mentally for his age and then physically he's pretty pretty good to play in the OHL. Like he holds his own for sure. Um, that's where my mind has changed a little bit where if you can identify that the kids are mentally strong, that the, the family background is mentally strong, the hockey background is strong and the purpose is strong and all that kind of stuff, that's where I can say, okay, I can buy it now. But I, at the end of the day, I don't believe that it's it's necessarily helping yeah. in any way. The other side is, like, so if I'm looking at a parent, like, I just said about pressure, right? Or I, I just said about mental, the mental side of it, is you have a, a microscope. I was going to say a microphone, but that would just be loud. <laughs> you have a microscope on everything you're doing. Here's the next star. Here's... You got to produce, and if you if you go eight games without a goal, that yeah. might have been a mistake. Yeah. Oh boy, and how does that fifteen year old feel, right? Because he has to be a point producer, or he has to be. If he's a power forward, let's say he better be knocking by, like Eric Lindros did when he went in, he, like knocking twenty year olds on their ass and dominating games, or or like Aaron Eckblad as a D, like actually running the power play early on and and just getting it. If you don't, the pressure's so high. And I I feel bad for Shane Wright. Not feel bad for him, but my the thing is is that like there's a lot of talk that because you're automatically supposed to be a first overall pick in the NHL. Right. If you're the exceptional status guy. Yeah. Well, and he's he's been rated and but there's been some debate whether he's actually the top guy because he's not putting up crazy ass points. But the thing is he's putting up really good points and he's a totally complete player like i guess a lot of the a lot of the uh, comparisons is patrice bergeron right the very very similar yeah. to that like a thinker like patrice bergeron isn't a guy that the on the highlight we reel all yeah. the time and so, it's, it's also kind of his first year too yeah yeah and he missed last you know, year with covid too missed last year like he played they, they didn't he never so played so a full he played, season yeah, yeah he played his first year had a great year and well he said he's unreal his his first year they played the full season yep well so, they missed Playoffs. So oh, like so he played the, play the whole regular season, right? Right. So then he misses. Then he missed a full year. So there, there. That's a so thing. that's that could put a wrench in yeah. it. But but the point is, the point is, is that there's pressure. Yeah. This guy doesn't have. You no, know, he's not on pace. I don't think for a 50 goal season. Well, how can he be an exceptional status? Well, he does everything else so well. Mm-hmm. Well, then, but then why is he an exceptional status? Is the question. Right. He's an amazing hockey player, and he most likely is going to go first overall, second overall, third overall, but probably first overall. Yeah. So, but was it necessary to go exceptional status? I don't think so. Yeah. But the pressure, man, the pressure on being uh, an exceptional status, it's like you're putting yourself in the Tavares, McDavid yep. uh, stratosphere, which is fine. Bedard looks like he's going to be a heck of a player. Um, so I, I don't know. Like, But then having my son go in uh, uh, like as a late, late, late birthday, it, I think it benefited him. Like... And I'm not like if my son had to play 06s this year. I'm not. He, would he would he be an, as challenged? I mean, he would make it as challenged as he could. Maybe you play to the level you're playing at, and um, but it would have been fine. He could go in the OHL next year and have his first. Yeah, it would have been fine. fine. It would have been fine. I would have been, been fine with yeah. that. I wouldn't have been. I need him to play exceptional status. Yeah. Not a chance. There isn't a clear benefit for me to the player. Yeah. But for the OHL and for Canadian hockey yeah. and for – it's not a, necessarily about what's the best for the player. And I'm not saying they're not doing what's best for the player, but they're doing what's best for them. And for the OHL, yeah. if you can put Connor McDavid in Erie, in Erie as a first overall pick, that might turn that organization around. And it did for well, how many years? So here's right? another one. So this is what I was going to say about Sean Day. Okay. He was a very good skater. Big – um, emotionally, he wasn't there. Yeah, wasn't there. But so now you got an American kid. So here, here's here's a reason, right? Here's an American kid. Here's the OHL. Here's colleges. Well, I'm going to apply for exceptional status. Okay. What's the debate now? The OHL either says, "Hmm, do we want this kid? We want this kid because he is really good, or do we want him to go to Notre Dame or Michigan?" Right. Then we lose him. Right? Yep. There's marketing. That's it. 
Well, don't and, care what anyone says. And, and That's I don't, marketing. I don't remember what. Maybe you do, but I don't remember what Erie was like before McDavid was there. They always had a good team. Did they always they, have? Did they always have the crowd though, like the big bump in arena? I, I, I always heard that it was a big, loud. Arena. Okay, I'm going there this weekend. By the way. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a drive. But anyways, if I think about um, the win in terms of turning an organization around, right? So if you look at the yeah. Windsor Spitfires, yeah, there's there's a good example. Now Taylor Hall was an exceptional status. No, but. When they were at the barn, you're getting 2,000 people at a game, 2,500. I don't even think they would get three or four at the old barn. I, uh, like like capacity? No, no. Like actual people going well, to watch. Well, no. They had good crowds because remember, Wellwood played there. And they had those teams that were like just Spezza. Okay, but up between, to- between Spezza and, and Hall. There was those years. I remember going to those games. Okay, so and there were not there was not sellout crowds. Okay. Like it was still a decent crowd because yeah. there wasn't as much capacity, so, so it looked full, but maybe something like that. Right. Even if it's four, right? Okay. Even if it's four. So then they pull in Taylor Hall, and they have this All Star team that's arguably one of the best yeah. OHL teams ever. Yeah. Them and the Corey Perry London Knights team, maybe. Yeah. Well, now they're putting seven thousand in at the new rink. You know what I mean? So you see, if you can, if you get a couple players oh, yeah. that sell, yeah, for sure, you might, you might, for sure. And they also got the new rink and all that. And they, so those and they are all sell factors. in other arenas. But, but that's yeah, that's what I mean, right? So if you put you put Connor McDavid in Erie, which maybe they were a struggling in terms of wins and whatever organization. Yeah. Well, now players want to go there, right? Yeah. More fans want to watch when they go on the road. It's starting to fill more seats in other yeah. rinks, like you're saying, Early. right? So it's like there's, I, yeah. I feel like the exceptional status thing to me is m- just more that it's more that's this kid is good enough to play here yeah so why don't we give the people something to watch i think that's yeah it's, t- and, and i don't know what their I motivation i don't, I don't is, know but, either and i don't know i don't know i don't know yeah i i, I just clearly they can play they're good enough yeah. Cle- to me clearly they should they could play tier two and it would be fine yeah like a junior a um but then maybe the maybe the maybe the thing is is that they risk losing them to could be that university of michigan but, but i don't know for and again i'm not f- for or against yep. the exceptional status i don't care like if the kid's good enough to play go ahead it's fine but just looking at it objectively if i take Eki is the closest one that i know and got to actually watch play yeah and what a player yeah, he's amazing but if he plays another year of triple a is that is that a problem I, like, think is it that, kills him. I think it might actually be good yep you know what i mean i don't know but yep. But, but I mean, for, for him, he won exceptional status. that won first overall in the NHL. So you can't there's no, yeah. you can't really make a, any kind of comparison or whatever. But yeah. if you look at a guy who maybe wasn't ready, like Sean Day, or was less ready, maybe he actually does. Well. Maybe he actually does benefit from playing an extra year or whatever. You know, I think it would have served him so, very well. So I think if you're looking in the interest of the player, eh. But if you're, I understand the interest of the league and the in terms of the marketing and sales part of it. Like, it sells, man. When James Duffy can go on TSN and talk yeah. about Connor McDavid exceptional 100%. status or this 07 kid from London was on TSN. By the way, I was just going to say about that 07 in London, uh, there's two of them, actually. Yeah, there's that two. Yeah. That are good. But the oh, one, they're both applying? Yeah, apparently. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I heard that. I was I heard mm-hmm. that. I heard there's four people applying for exceptional status this year. Four? Yeah. That's what I hear. Wow. And then the one... From London, his son, his brother plays in uh, Niagara. His last name is Rubric, and uh, I heard that this kid. I've heard it for, I guess, how many years I can hear. Like probably the last five years, that this kid is legit, really, really, really good. Like really good. And really. You know what? I hope I want him to be really good, and I and if he gets exceptional status, all the all, God bless you, and I hope you do really well, and I'm sure he will. Yeah, I'm sure he will. I'm positive he will. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the so the exceptional status thing, I don't know. And then the funny thing is, is that you have to apply. So I assume that the agent is the one that pursues that. And, yeah. you know, that's something, again, that's probably their best interest to do that for marketing and stuff. But um, anyways, I was just reading an article today about exceptional status. And then uh, there's an article on Shane Doan. Speaking of Shane Doan, who played Winnipeg, Arizona. Great hockey player, unbelievable hockey player, captain. Um, interest, interesting little nugget just should provide some inspiration for some players who get passed over early in their careers. 
What do Shane Doan, Jerome McGinla, Darcy Tucker, Jason Strugwick, and Jason Holland all have in common? None of them were drafted in the Western Honka League draft. And together they've got 11 Memorial Cups. That team won three Memorial Cups in a row, I believe. They all played in the same team. Yeah. Wow. What a team. But so that's your core. And then you got uh, um, Tucker, unbelievable pro hockey player, NHL hockey player. Strudwick, a great NHL defenseman. Jerome McGinley, Hall of Fame, Team Canada. I know Jason Holland, I just don't know him, but that doesn't mean he wasn't uh, a great player. So having said that, and that was my point, is that I would like for my son to just go about it quietly and just get his, get the business done. Um, all the stuff and the acc- accolades that come with it, I mean, if, if you're good early, it, it happens. But at the end of the day, it, it actually doesn't matter because there's a Shane Doan out there and there's a Darcy Tucker out there and there's a Jerome McGinley out there, unless I already said him, that are out there anyways. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you can get drafted third overall in the National Hockey League and Jerome McGinley comes scratching and yeah, yeah, and then right. takes your spot and then you wonder what happened. Yeah. So I just, I'm just a firm believer. If you're good, great. Do the work. Keep working. God bless you and the horse you rode in on. Hope things work out well. Do the stuff, like really sincerely. Yeah. And then for the guy that didn't get drafted or got drafted late and has the desire, God bless you and the horse you rode in on. Yep. And work your ass off to take someone's spot. That's what hockey is. When you make the NHL, or junior for the matter, for that matter, it's not you're given a spot. You're either taking a spot or someone's taking yours. That's the way it is. So you got to work your ass off yeah. either way, whether you're a successful status, first round, not drafted. Yeah, it goes that goes back to our there's no recipe episode, man. They come no from, recipe. All, from always. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so kind of branching from that, I guess, getting into topic that, for today. Yeah. Um, some of the things that happens as kids start to get older is – when you start to become a hockey player or you think you start to become a hockey player, there's a lot of wrong roads that are available to you now when you start to get up into the draft year age and beyond. There's a lot of ways that you can go wrong and there's a lot of bad habits that you can pick up, not just playing habits, but just life general habits. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit today. And the reason I thought of that was I was watching this uh, a kid um, – He's a good player, and there's a lot of things that I can see when I look at this kid that could end up costing him, and it's not from necessarily a playing perspective. It's an attitude perspective or a body language perspective or whatever, and there's another kid that same age, also a really good player, who's the opposite, that it looks like he could get a lot of pluses on his report card because he's got a lot of habits the opposite way in the terms of attitude and body language and all those kinds of things. So play, being a hockey player, especially in Canada where hockey is the sport, I see it most, not most, but a ton of guys that I play with, you can see they get some of these bad lifestyle habits. So I wanted to talk about some of them from, we could do playing like the actual game bad habits for sure. Yeah. But that, then just like mental bad habits or lifestyle bad habits yeah, yeah. That, that you can pick up. So I'll leave it there for you to hop in and yeah just your thoughts on that before we get going? Well, it's kind of interesting that you said that because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with uh, just quickly on some of the playing habits, right? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, one of the bad habits is um, if you don't, if you don't hit on, we were, we were watching a game the other day with a scout, right? Yeah. I think that's a little bit of perspective on some stuff. Yep. It was interesting to hear their point of view. Little things as we always talk about, they see things that other people don't see. So, for example, he was looking at 1D that he wanted to like or he's trying to like. And he said out loud, he goes, just, I, I wouldn't mind if he just got involved just a little bit. Just physically. Give yeah. someone a stick. And if yeah. someone says, like, why did you do that? And he says, because I felt like it. Right. You know, to have a little bit of a jam. So he noticed that. He noticed, uh, you know, there was one guy that got a, a guy somewhat of a, a point getter, I guess, that got the puck in the, in the honey hole. And dusted it off, then shot. And I said at first, I said, "Guy, you got to get that off your stick." And he said, "Yeah, you got. To, you don't have time at the next level." And then there was, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that sticks out. But anyways, for me, those are the things I noticed. And then I noticed one of the players that just have an exceptional game. Smaller guy, won every battle, 
And, and, you know, he was noticing that too. He goes, it's hard not to like, really hard not to like. Um, having said all that, that was the first time I've been to a, a, a youth hockey game in two years because of the COVID, right, to actually watch a live game. Uh, enjoyable. But um, what I noticed is a lot of the bad habits. And one was not getting the shots off quick. So, like, guys, when you, you don't have time, so, like, those are, that's, that's a habit, right? You get a puck, you got to get it off. Got to make the plays early. Uh, D, play D. Like what a lot of the times is people try to do something that they're not because they think it's going to impress other people, like like scouts and stuff. And it's not actually to your benefit to be something that's not like if you're a D, play D. If you're, if you're a goal scorer, make sure you're getting your shots. Uh, bad habit is the mouthy guys, the guys that never shut up. Um, that That's a body language issue. It's just, it's bad. You got to, you got to rein that in. Uh, finishing checks. A lot of guys don't just don't do it. It's a bad habit. And when, when if you're not finishing checks, checks, typically what you're doing is you're doing circles, right? You're figure skating. Yep. And you can take yourself out of the play. And uh, doing too much. Um, and then not like when you see plays, make them. Those are habits that that are that are uh, they're not benefiting you. And to me, the biggest one that stands out. Bad habit as far as playing goes, because we can talk about lots of details, yeah, yeah. but just in, in general, is the, your attention to detail in the D zone. That's why I say everyone should play lacrosse. Every hockey player should play lacrosse. Or basketball, I believe, is the same. You have to play hard D. And I just find in hockey, a lot of the kids' attitudes are, I want to score goals. Bad, that's a good habit, that you want to score goals. A bad habit is you don't care as much in your D zone. Bad habit. Yep. And an example that I'm going to use is... Two summers ago, when Eric Wellwood, who coached at the time the Flint Firebirds, who had a really good team, so not only was he out here training with me, training guys with me, and and teaching them how to be hockey players, but if you stud out, he would, and and, you're, and the scouting staff liked him. He can vouch that yeah, this kid can play. So there's a particular kid on the team who actually get got drafted, and uh, he's a very good player. But we were doing de- defensive zone drill, and he, this guy tuned right out, and it was his effort was. Less than fifty percent for sure. So I said at first, I said to the to the, the use his name. I said, "Hey, you need to pick this up. I mean, you got to get understand your D zone. Like the the more that you do your D zone, the better hockey player you're going to be. In much longer term, and a couple of foul words, and then a couple a couple more uh, sets later, or drills later, doing the same drill sets. Eric lost it. I said, if you're not going to try get off the ice he goes if you play like that at the next level you, you won't even get one shift and the kid pouted and didn't want to do the drill and like he, he still was out there but he was like he went from maybe doing it 30 percent to maybe 50 percent yeah and the agent called hey how's he doing and eric told him flat out he was never play a game in our league he, he doesn't have the attitude like it's it, it was an attitude but it was attention to detail like bad habit learn how to play the d zone and do the little things as hard as you can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, anything from you? Yeah. I like how you you were pointing out this is, ended up being a kid who got drafted because this is what happens is kids that start to get good in minor hockey, yeah, they they can get away with or they think they can get away with these types of on ice behaviors. So if you're an offensive player, like this is another one I was the game I was watching last night, one of the one of the better players, he's always looking for the chip and go in the yep. D zone, right? The easy one. And it's like it's you're not going to get it man you're not going to get it stop your feet yep. stop your feet in the d stop zone your feet. and stuff like hanging on to the puck too long or not making the pass that you should make because you think you'll do better if you keep the yep. puck which could be true you know if you're on a, on an average team and let's say you don't trust your defenseman to make a good play you might think well i'm just going to hang on to it and make my play because me having the puck is better than him having the puck even if you're right it's the wrong play so now you're just practicing bad habits because like you said at the next level you can't do that and that's what happens you run out of time and space as you get into the higher level so if you're a good player you need to be aware of we always talk about like playing the game properly and this is something that actually justin always says to me when we're talking about players he'll say yeah like he doesn't really play the right way but he's good for his on his team or he's good in that game or whatever and when we talk about playing the right way, it's play as if you were going to be playing at the next level. So if you go into a game and think, if I was playing called up a year right now, well, how would I play? What would I do if that was the case? 
And that might help to center you to make some better decisions yeah. with things that you might think you can get away with. Yeah. Because the guys, they notice, man. The, the, the scouts, they notice whether you do things the right way or the wrong way. You know? And when we sit do. there, like you said, we, we sit at that game. You can, you can watch these kids and what they're doing. And you hear the scouts say the same thing we, we think when we're watching whichever kid they're keying in on that game. You know, they say the same thing. It's like you can't dust the puck off. You don't have time. Or why aren't you moving your feet to the middle when – but you can get away with it because you're just a better player right now, you know? But when you get Yeah, to- you're a better player, and that kid got a shot off. It didn't go in. But your goalies aren't necessarily... That's it too, right? Taught. They're good goalies for minor midget. Yeah. They're the best that you can get in the area, apparently. Yeah. So there, there's, a, there's a certain quality, but they're not the best goalies that you're ever going to shoot against. Yeah. So if you, if you take that, you know, I can't even tell you how many times with... In, the same people like that can get it, but they choose not to really focus, you know, getting the puck way too outside, dusting it off, pulling it back, all these different little shooting cues for a goalie and defense to read, they read them. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you dust the puck off, it gives that extra second split second for a goalie defenseman, everyone to just and block shots and get in the way. Whereas if you understand to get it on your stick, so you got to practice it. That's right. It yeah. doesn't have to be the like a beautiful shot. It can, sometimes it comes off off balance, but they go in. Yeah, you know, or or uh, and and it was really nice. Remember the kid that sent us a video the other day. So he was at the shooting camp, and he he yeah. got that beautiful goal out of exactly releasing a puck uh, in in the honey hole. How we were practicing for basically a day and a half. That's pro. That's a pro move. To, yeah, and he yeah. sent it to us. He goes like, I I, I did it. And I go, yeah, you did it because you 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 did some practice. Yeah. And it was perfect. Awesome. It was awesome, bud. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And and the way you phrase it, I really love this. You you're this is coined for you. You've coined this is the take the minor hockey out of it. Mm-hmm. That is basically the key. Yeah. If you're gonna take one takeaway for your on ice habits in terms of your playing style, yeah. it's take the minor hockey out of it. Yeah. If you got called up to play a junior B game or play a year up or play at yeah. whatever level, would you be able to do that? Yeah. That's the question to ask yourself. And if you're a defenseman and you're gonna try to take it end to end you probably can't really do that at the next level. Or you look your buddy off over here because you see a lane this way. Yeah. It's like you probably aren't going to get away with that if you played up or if you played the next level or whatever. It's not going to work. So you got to keep that you got to keep that in mind when you're when you're playing cuz yeah. those habits will start to creep in. Yeah. And, and, from, and and just a, a, a side note is is effort, right? Effort even when you don't feel like it like it's a bad idea. It's a not it's a not a good habit cuz your habits do take over. When you're tired, when you're you, when you don't feel like it, like that's when they, your bad habits get exposed even more. Yep. So that's why you, you, you know, you have that checklist of what you do well, but then it's those little things like, are you for checking at your absolute hardest? Are you taking, are you finishing your checks when you, when age appropriate? Are you, fin- I'm not saying kill people, but are you getting some contact? Because you have to have some contact out there. Are you getting rid of the puck quickly? Are you use distributing the puck properly? Like, I remember it used to frustrate me a little bit. Not really. But when I was in youth hockey, I'd always like, that's the play to make. Okay, here's a two-on-one. He's open. I give it to him. I go to the net. Many times the guy, the kid wasn't talented enough to score or maybe even fumble the puck and you'd be like, ah, come on, man. But you know what? You go do it again and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. You do the right thing over and over. You back check hard even though it's a 10-1 game. Either way, winning or losing. You do that. It's a bad habit not to do that because that, that creeps in. And once the once it starts seeping in, it starts taking over. Yeah. So you want to make it, you're checking in on those good habits. Yeah, and so maybe making a lateral move here, sticking yeah. with the with the on ice, but yeah. instead of specific skills, I want to talk a little bit about behaviors now. So it's not just you're dusting the puck off or you're looking yeah. a guy off or whatever, but now things like that. So if you're one of the, especially if you're one of the better players, it's so easy to let these things slip slip in where, like you think you're good. And you start to get that attitude like you think you're good. So you got that little bit of swag on the ice or that yep. shoulder shrug, like whatever. Or you you do things that are a little bit dirty because you know you can get away with it. Or we had one, we were watching that game the other night. And this stuck out to me. I don't know, maybe you, maybe you don't mind it. But to me, this was something that I didn't like. The team that they were playing against when we were watching with that, the scout, between periods, they walk off the ice to, to, for the Zamboni to flood. And as they're walking by the 1D, I'm just going to say what he said exactly. He was walking by us. Yeah. And he doesn't know if we're scouts or whatever, but he was walking by us. And he just goes, man, this kid on the Windsor team, man, this kid is so shit. 
That's what he said. Yeah. Walking by. Yeah. Just throw like yap in his mouth. And that's yeah. another thing is like yeah. your mouth, man. Like you think you can have this like foul mouth or speak in the beauty talk and this kind of stuff. Like these are the things that you can get into as well because you think that you're a hot shit athlete or whatever. You start to get that overconfidence about yourself, yep. you know, and that's a horrible 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 habit to get into because i don't care how old you are at what age or how good you think you are you're not that good man you're not that good so these kids come off walking right by a scout well and just above us there's about five yeah and and even if you don't think there's scouts there like there's parents like someone's mom is sitting there like just it's just respect right like shut your mouth wait till you get in the room and then you can yap if you want to yap you know what i mean but a lot, of the, a lot of these hockey player kids will get this run my mouth type of attitude because they think that there's some kind of tough or hot shit in their triple A league yeah. when they're playing, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know your thoughts on just those types of things on the ice, like what you think about that stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, to me, it, it, it's glaring to me. Um, it's body language and it's, it's yapping. And it's not backing up with play. Like, and even if you are a great player, I, I, I'm, I've said this before. I'm not a fan of the yappers because to me, talk is just so cheap. But one of our scouts, the guy we were with the other night, uh, excellent scout by the way. He a lot of the times likes to sit right across from the bench because he says I can see their body language. I see how they respond to goals, goals against, how the coach uses them. You can see the shrug, the shoulders, how they respond to how, when the coach is actually talking to them, whether they're looking at them. So body language is number one. Please don't have bo- bad body language. Like, and and that could be like too arrogant or 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 like you're so cool. Yeah, or you're right? a suck. Or you're a suck. So like you need to be aware of just shrugging your shoulders or, you know, bo- is it bobbing your head, whatever, whatever, yeah, it, whatever is, it is. Or the look of like... Come on, man. That look like yeah, yeah. like I'm I'm amazing. The things are supposed to go my way. Like that quiet confidence of just you know, if you're taking a face off, just getting there, no words are said, you're 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 just there and ready and you have a good shift. That's a good habit. When you go there and you have to like do the elbow pads and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You have these habits before because they look cool or whatever, or you you know, I've seen guys do some some weird things. Um and then yap. Yeah. Like it, it turns me off as someone watching a hockey player yeah. because it's like, that's the show, but what, like, that's a lot of sizzle. Where's the steak? Yeah. You know, but it creeps in. Once you get used to doing that, you're looking at, it's just part of your game. Yeah. It's part of your stick after a while. And I don't like it. Yeah. The scouts don't like it. Like, honestly, like I'm not saying anything different, but scouts don't like it. That's right. If you want to go somewhere, they don't like it. You got to remember everything that you're doing is you're going to, if you're going somewhere, you're going to represent a team. Mm-hmm. And, if bringing attention to yourself through being the be, being the big wheel all the time or whatever, like you're taking away from the team, you're you're, you're focusing on you. And it's not a good thing. Yeah. Well, and I, I just had another example. Like, so another game I was watching, kid had a couple of goals, one real nice goal, yep. and uh, these two teams are a little bit rivals, so they were going back and forth, whatever. And but every time this kid did something. It was right away yap at the other team about it. So whether it was score a goal, go by the bench and yap, or get in buddy's face between whistles after you did something cool or whatever it was, or you miss the net and you can hear them yell the F word, like this kind of stuff. It's like now you're standing out, not because you're good, which you actually are, but you're not standing out for that. Now you're standing out because you're kind of a goof, you know? And like you said, it's, it's never like, and some scouts that watch you, they might not mind that. They might not care because you see these kids all the time with these bad attitudes that still get drafted and whatever, but it's never going to be worse. You're never going to be worse off having that quiet confidence like yep. you were talking about, you know, yep. and you might be worse off if you don't, because it'll be a turnoff that you have. You're always talking shit or have some bad attitude or yep. like you said, like one, I was watching the game, a game last night and the guy was, he kid got kicked out of the face off. And uh, he started yapping at the linesman that kicked him out about where he was lined up on the faceoff. And it's yeah. like, he kicked you out. Like, he's not changing his mind. Guess who wins that battle yeah. every Just time? Get out of the circle so he can play the game. Yeah. But you spend five seconds making a show yeah. of it. And then 
the big head roll, yeah. hands up, like whatever. It's like, and if you're a good player and you're doing that kind of stuff, the, like you said, the scouts don't like it, man. Well, to me, to me, and to a lot of people, what that is screaming is that you're out of control. Right. Yeah. And that's out of control means you're not mentally tough. Yeah. You're not mentally focused. So if you can let a, a ref kick you out of a face off and you start yapping him and losing it, like you're not old enough to do that yet. Right. You could ask, like, what did, what did I do? Like, but yeah. like, and, and question you. And I understand the frustration, but when you start getting pulled in different directions emotionally, your body language, those habits are the, the, they can destroy you because it literally taking you out of the game. Yeah. Take, taking you out of your own head. And and once you're out of your own head, if it's one or two little things, that could, that could, that could give you a bad game, man. Yeah. Well, and then it also turns into a distraction yeah. type of thing too. Like the other side of it that you kind of touched on a bit was like the style, the, yeah. the style points that you get yeah. on the ice. Like you have your jersey up to here yeah. or the way your tape is or what kind of tuck yeah, you yeah, have yeah. or <laughs> how your hair looks in your yeah. helmet. Yeah. It's like these are all things that, it's that like beauty yeah. gong show lifestyle type of, yeah. and when you actually speak to adults that are in the hockey industry, they all say the same thing. They're all just like, yeah, I don't really know what it is with the kids, like what they're doing today. Like, or even like how, how you dress. Yeah. That's another one that bugs me. It's like, mm -hmm. you're so worried about how you look. Like we were looking at the one OHL page the other day where they had pictures of some of their guys walking in and I'm like, what are you wearing? Like, you look like a goof, man. Okay, so that throws me right off. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a, a very young, old man. So I get a lot of the stuff. Some of the stuff I don't, but I get it. What I don't get is, and this is the Matthews effect, in my opinion. It's the NBA marketing. Like that's what that's what happened to right. NHL. Right? Like they they're promoting NHL players to be more of a marketing presence. So that's where you see a lot of the dressing up. And they're doing a lot of the, some of the kids in the OHL are doing that. So we were, you know, instead of just walking in, what do you wear? A shirt and tie and whatever. Okay. I get, like, I honestly get why do we have to wear a tie? Right. But if you're going to wear a shirt and tie, you, I think you got to wear it. Wear it, right, wear it the right way. If you don't have to wear a tie, wear, wear something decent. <clears throat> Sometimes they'll let you wear track, your track outfits. Fine. Whatever. It's fine. Look like you're, like you care about yourself. But then there was these before the games, like all these teams are taking pictures of the guys walking in like they do in the NHL. So this one team, actually one of my guys, came in and they looked like they were Kanye West. Oh or, you God. know, like they, they look like pimping out. Yeah, it's like so they're Al dressed Capone up and walking they got the in, chains man. Out. It was yeah. like the biggest show that you could get. And for me, I'm like, oh, God, like yeah. just play hockey, man. Like you put more, a lot of these guys put more time into their pregame outfit yeah. so they can walk in looking cool than. They they then they uh, they do on their mental toughness for that game, preparing for that game, or yeah. or playing for that game. It's all about the image. Yeah. And for me, it's like when I see that, even though you might be a great player and stuff, when I see that, I'm like, you're focused on a lot of other shit besides what you need to be focused on. Yeah. And I remember when I was playing in junior, the same. Like I'm not again. I always say this, but. I, I'm not saying I didn't do any of this stuff. I remember you go on for the 20 minute warm up, and you want to make sure that you have your really cool routine in yeah, the yeah. corner where the fans are so that yeah, they can yeah. look at you for an extra yeah, four we're all seconds. Kids, right? We're all players yeah. and we're a little bit of entertainers. Yeah. And I, and I get, I can get the, the drive and the desire to want to do yep. some of that. I totally can understand it. And I'm not even saying that you can never do some of that. No. You can, but keep the main thing, the main thing, right? Yeah. Like we always say on here too, yeah. you want to make sure that you're focused on the hockey part and you you can pick up some of this stuff where it's like you're so focused on your outfit before you get to the rink where people see you for five seconds right. or after the game. It's like you're not actually preparing to play. That's and right. People pick up on this stuff, so it's just another bad habit. And then what happens is it leaks. It gets leaky. Oh, you get it, leaky. It right? leaks into other parts of your life, right? Where you're so overconfident away from the rink now when you're yeah. just out in public, yeah. or how you're treating people or well, whatever. An example I can get, and, I, and maybe I have the story wrong. But an example that I would have is if we look at Sean Avery, right? This was a good hockey player, man. He was a great hockey player. I forget how early or late he got drafted, but he got drafted and started off with the Detroit Red Wings. And maybe he was a, a kind of a mouthpiece and, and whatever. But what happened was he was becoming a rat, which is a, for him, it was a great role, right? It helped him be a good hockey player. But the rat turned into something else 
and maybe it was beneficial to him. I don't know. But he, was, he became very, very hated in hockey. No one's cheering for the guy. Uh, and then he started to take that routine and just exponentially getting worse, 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 to the point where people wanted to kill him. Yep. Coaches couldn't stand him. And did it ruin his career? Or was he at the end of it? I don't know. And yet Sean Avery might be totally happy with how his career went, and it went well. Um, but it, it, with, with, it was like almost a sideshow, Sean Avery night. And, and that's what happens when you have leaky attitudes, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It and became it, a fashion thing. It became talking bad about people's on camera. And, 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 and the show itself on the ice was always something's going to happen to the point where it was hurting his team. Mm-hmm. And it's, you got to be very careful with those habits because being a rat, like, and even like Marshawn, right? Yep. He he's he's got it in check for the most part, but then he goes across the line sometimes. He's like, "What an idiot!" That's right. I don't think he's an idiot. I, I but some things. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Some of the things he does, I go like, "Why? Why?" Yeah. But it seems to work for him. He's he's doing fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but well, you can see how it can get away from you, right? Well, yeah. And this is what I want to kind of start to branch into this, talking about more of the off ice stuff now, okay. because it, like I, I was just saying, it starts to leak out into other things. So now socially or when you're, if you're in the media or even when you're younger, if you're at school, I remember so many of these guys, how you're treating other people. Yeah. Some of these habits start to leak into that because you have this arrogance or this, I know everything or this, whatever you want to call it about yourself. And you think you can just do whatever the hell you want because someone thinks you're decent at hockey or whatever it is, you know? And what happens when you as you start to get older, when you're playing, let's say you're draft your AAA or you end up in the OHL or playing junior or whatever, you, you're in a, an elite position. You have a bit of an elite role and people give you more attention. So oftentimes for kids, and this is where they, they need to have some guidance and have a good environment to deal with this kind of stuff. You can start to think you're the best thing ever, man, because people keep telling you or keep treating you like you are. So then you start to think it doesn't matter how you're treating other people. And so I see this kind of stuff. I remember seeing it in high school and and when I was in university, yeah, I was really fortunate. Like my parents, that was not allowed. That type of shit was not allowed. I was always, I was humbled every day by my parents with stuff like that. And so I want to talk about a little bit of the, you can go whichever way you want with this, but a little yeah. bit of the off ice stuff, whether it's the partying or the stereotypes of how hockey players yeah. treat girls yeah. or all that kind of shit away from, okay. away from the rink. Okay. So first of all, I just talked about how what we did as parents is uh, because I was played and the things that bothered me is when guys would treat people differently. Well, here's the thing. Once you get, once you, when you are a good hockey player and you're in high school or you get drafted and you're playing the OHL or whatever, there is a little bit more attention on you because you're doing something. I don't want to say spectacular, but you're, you're doing something that more exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, you're doing something that, that people Anybody that plays hockey would love to be in that position to play for the Windsor Spitfires, yep. right? Or the Guelph Storm or whatever. Every, that's, there's, there's, it's neat. It's pretty cool. Like, wow, what's it like? But it's all, it, all it means is that you're good at hockey and you've dedicated yourself to hockey. And it doesn't mean one thing about in society that you have a special status whatsoever. So the great thing, that, the, the great thing with my wife is my wife was always, be, was always able to take Charlie and put him in the humble pie situation. So ever since he was a little boy, my wife taught him how to donate and always showed less fortunate people. And I, and we would ask questions, you know, like, why do you think that person's in that situation? Or why do you think he's successful? And it, Charlie had a healthy respect for successful people. And he understood that, yeah, maybe some of them had a dad that had a business or whatever, and they got lucky. But he realized from an early age that success came from people really working hard and buckling down. And then we would, like I use the term, we used to judge people all the time. Like I used to ask Charlie after conversations, like what, what, what do you think that's, what's going on there? So that he would have, an, not judgy, but to understand like where is that person's head? So he was able at a young age to identify when someone was a pretender and when somebody was insecure or arrogant or whatever the, whatever they are, he's been able to see a lot of the NHL players that I have treat people not properly or treat people only to their gain or treat people that they think it's important to treat people right. So he's seen that. So he understands by being around it that it hurts people when someone, you know, just because you play in the NHL or the OHL and someone wants to ask you a question 
it's okay to spend two minutes. You don't have to give them their, your life, but it's okay to be nice to that person. And when you're not, it actually hurts them. It makes them feel insignificant. They hate your guts for it, man. Mm-hmm. Is it that hard to say what's it like to play for the Guelph Storm? And you say, ah, it's cool, like, leave me alone? No. You take a few minutes and you talk to them and ask them a question about their life and you, you're awesome for the rest of your life. And it's that simple. I can't stand it when I see a hockey player that walks around and thinks that they're the king shit because they're good at hockey. You're good at hockey, man. You and, and, and like as we talk about all the time, might be the only thing you're good at. So settle down, tone down, tone down. You know, parents have a big responsibility in teaching them, their kids how to be humble. Um. Now, I can go a long time on this, but the bottom line is that if you are, and you know, some people don't care. Some people just don't care. But you're in a position where you want to have all the glory. You want everyone, you know, you're the cool guy looking at you and all that stuff. You love that, but you have to be able to, it's your responsibility, in my opinion, to make someone, I'm not saying less than you, but someone that is admiring you in some way, to make them feel like it was worth admiring. Like, that's a nice guy. If I ever heard my son came back and treated someone like shit because he just didn't have a time to say hi or something like that, I'd be very upset. I think it's a lesson we have to learn. But, you know, just put yourself in that situation, right? You play for the Edmonton Oilers. Honestly, in life, big deal. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. You play for the Edmonton Oilers. It's not a big deal. It's a big deal to you because that's your dream. But, yeah. like, really in the, in the big scheme of things, what did you do in life? Yep. Right. So that perspective helps. You're not that cool. You're just a hockey player. Um, so that's 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 kind of one thing. You have something to go on with that? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll I'll get you back to because okay. that was that was nice. I like that. But because uh, what happens is if you start to have the attitude that you're talking about, where you're a cool guy, what what's going to happen is you start to like you got to keep in mind that most guys that play hockey aren't going to be hockey players. Yeah. You know, and so for the select few that you're talking about where they actually play in the NHL and they have an attitude like that, like shame on them for being like that. But there's way more guys that still have that attitude, but didn't even or won't even or don't even make it at all. And they still have that attitude. Yeah. And what happens is because they have that attitude, they start to get into some shit away from the rink that actually costs them in life now. Because most of these kids that play, even if you think you're the best player right now, you're probably not going to be a hockey player. If I had to bet, almost every single person, you're not going to be a professional yeah. hockey player. Yeah. So what happens is if you have that kind of attitude, you can get away with it more if you actually are in the NHL or, or a little bit more if you are in the OHL right now. But even that, it comes to an end one day, you know? Yeah. And if you have the type of attitude that you're talking about, what you end up left being left with when you're done hockey is just those stupid bad habits that nobody needs to tolerate anymore because you're not actually doing anything that's in any way admirable because you're not actually a hockey player. You're not in the NHL. You're not making the big bucks. So people are way less willing to tolerate your bullshit because you're now out of rope. Your rope just ran out. And that's happened with, we got guys right here that happens to a bunch of them where it's people just, now they just disappeared into regular life and they don't actually have any skills yeah. to get through regular life because they yeah. were so busy being an arrogant dick yeah. in hockey. Now, all they do is they want to go out and party and chew and whatever other recreational substances they're into yeah. or bad habits with, with women or their relationships or their family or their yeah. brother or their whatever, yeah. and they don't even know what to do with their life now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, speaking on some of those things, well, I, here's here's my experience Mostly, like within a hockey room and a hockey culture, even in our little thing here, we have our language, right? right? Yeah. It's our culture. There's a hockey culture, right? Like it's pretty hard to say just pass the puck. Well, you know, we use these, you say sauce, sauce it over or something like that. And it's just funny within the room. So when the guys go out in public and talk to adults or talk to the general public like that, it's where it becomes a little bit like, what a goof. That's where a lot of the guys out there, they, they, that, they give the image of that's what hockey players are like, like, they, always, they think they're so cool and all that stuff. That's typically not the real hockey players. Yeah. You know, within themselves, like, you know, like there's there's terms and there's stuff that it's just funny within the room. But outside of it, it's it's 
you're not fitting in society, guys. Yeah. You know, you get the odd thing where it's pretty funny, but it's you're not fitting in society. But you mentioned a couple things, and I would I would like to say, um, for a hockey player, for anybody, but for for a hockey player, what happens when you get into hockey is um, in hockey there's a lot of chewing tobacco, right? Like that's just one one area, like. I always told my son, like, because he knows someone that has been doing it for a long time and can't quit. And uh, I said to him, I said, when, 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 when that person started chewing at 16 when he was playing junior hockey to try it, I said, do you think he, do you think he tried it with the knowledge that when he's going to go into his 40s and 50s, he'd still be doing it? No, he didn't try it. You didn't, you know. So the, the point is, like, all these things are around. So. Choose a big thing. I know a lot of parents would say, well, in hockey, I thought it was baseball. That's what a lot of people say. Oh, no, no, hockey, it's, it's a huge thing. Chew. And I'm just saying this to kids. If you if you think it's cool, like it's, just, it's, a, it's a bad habit. If you know if you go into that chewing tobacco thing and you try it once or you, you smoke a dart once, there's a good chance that you have a beer one day, you smoke it again, right? You begin that, or, or whatever, that habit. Once you get leaky, it continues. Because once you do one thing, it turns into two, into three, into a habit. Right, and then and then what happens is your habits are actually going to control you. Right, so it's like if you have to have coffee before a hockey game, which is nothing wrong with it, but if it's just like a, st- a straight habit, then all of a sudden that habit controls you. And I'm going to ask, you know, if Charlie and the boys are, listen to this one, how many of you before you played for the uh, in the OHL did you have to stop at Tim Hortons to grab a, a coffee? I know my son didn't do that when he was a kid, but I know that he goes and grabs a coffee before every game. That's what they do. Not bad. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. We're just saying, let's pay attention to what we're doing. So now we think about that habit. That habit's now controlling your life. What do we do? It's like, it's like, it's like a guy that smokes. He has his meal, puts his fork down, I think, <laughs> right? And then he can't think of anything else until, until he has that dart. He goes outside or whatever, he has a smoke and comes back in, now he's good. Mm-hmm. So now if you're a hockey player, you can't play hockey. You're going to the rink, it's like, we're going to Tim Hortons, we're going to Tim Hortons, we're going to Tim Hortons, yeah, yeah, have all this shit. So a couple things are happening here. Coffee, not the worst thing in the world for you necessarily, it'll stimulate you, but what kind of coffee are you having? Are you having a cappuccino, a frappa cappuccino, are you having a freaking whatever they're called? Are they $7 coffees? Like, yeah. How so much now you're spending it, yeah. a lot of money, you might be buying for other guys, and you're putting crap in your body. So, like, out of that habit, there's a whole bunch more, and it's financially costing because at 17 years old, you're not rich. Yeah. So if you start spending every day going to the rink, two, three bucks a day every day, you're, you're spending more than I spend in a day. Yeah. I'm, I'm an adult making money. So habits. Right. Well, you don't control your habits. Your habits control you. So, like, I'm not saying don't get a coffee, kids. I'm not saying that, but I'm just pointing that out, that once you start something and then it becomes automatic, there's no getting out of it. It's a conscious effort. A conscious effort now, and now it's really, really hard. It's treating. It's it's having the the chew, right? You have a chew once. Yeah, I'll try it. Ah, I didn't really like it, and then you know maybe you're you got a buzz on one day, and you, someone else has chew, or you're going to try it again because the boys. Oh, this just chew's different. It's got the tea bag around it, right? It's the the snooze. So you, uh, oh yeah, it's a little bit. I don't mind that. So all of a sudden, I don't mind that becomes. Oh yeah, I'll have another one. I'll have another. And then all of a sudden, you're buying your own. Next thing you know, you're. 48 years old and you, you can't stop doing it and it's costing you money. Yep. Right? Yeah. It's, it's having a beer after the game. That's, then we're all going to do this stuff. Like I'm, not, I'm not saying don't do anything. I'm just saying be aware of your habits, your bad habits. Yep. They're going to cost you money. They're going to take brain space away from you. Right? It's, it's, it's treating girls the right way. You know? And a lot of the boys will laugh, right? Because they're young guys. But it's like, no, no. It's treating girls the right way. Like... There's a there's a way you you're 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 wearing a jersey you're representing a um, a brand your team representing a, a group of guys it's treating girls the right way like you know be polite be nice treat them the right way so that they can you know you're representing yourself right and later on in life someone could look at you and say no that was a good guy yeah you know these are little habits that are that that are critical to having a good life if that makes any sense yep and uh, so the habits. Yeah. Anyways, those are those are habits, and then I got one that's important, but I'll let you go first. Yeah, I'll I'll branch in, and then maybe we can finish on that yeah. as a last one here. Um, but I like the way you said it, though. It's not about you can never do some of this stuff. It's about this is exactly what you said. Let's pay attention to what we're doing, yeah. you know. And that's what it is. If you want to have a coffee before the game, that's fine. You can have a coffee before the game. Yeah. But 
you don't want to need a coffee before the game. Yeah. That's where you can draw the line. Yeah. You know, you don't want to need to have a chew. You don't want to need to have a beer or have a whatever. And I can't tell you how many guys I played with where that is what they say. Yeah. They will say like, I need to have a chew right now. Like, oh my God, I'm dying to have a chew. And I'm just like, how could that, how could you need that that bad? Right. And it's yeah. because they get into that, that cycle and it's like anything man you get addicted to certain things and not addicted like it's going to ruin your life addicted but addicted uh, and but it could but it could ruin your life yeah and if you don't like and again habits start very small and innocent right yep like a, a habit of working out doesn't start off like i'm going to create a working out habit it starts off like either you're into it or you decide I'm going to start exercising. And then next thing you know, I literally, and you literally cannot, I hate using the word literally, mm -hmm. everyone uses it inappropriately. So figuratively, <laughs> but I don't feel good if I don't work out. Yeah, It's a habit. You don't create your future. Your, your habits create your future. Right? Yep. So over time, working out becomes my dr a drug, our drug. It is a drug. Yep. If I don't get it, I don't feel good. Or for two days, I feel, okay, I'm missing something. That's a good habit. A bad habit is like when you say, like, yeah, you need to chew. You don't think that can ruin your life? No, it can. It can. You could, you could die from the stuff. You can be so dependent on it that you can't even socialize with people. Yeah. Like, it, it can financially cost you. Yeah, that's right. You start adding up how much it costs, and then you exponentially uh, add that up over a lifetime. And, and just think of your mental weakness and then that I'm, I'm not better than anyone man you know what i mean but it, it adds up so it can cost you your life yeah yeah it can, it, and it can, it can but i don't want to i'm not trying to i'm not I saying know. all this stuff to I try know. to make kids scared of doing whatever yeah. they're gonna do yeah but it's just about the paying attention part yeah you know it's just about the paying attention part and to like you said at the end there these are things that'll set you up for life when you're no longer a hockey player because yeah. that day is coming yeah where you're no longer a hockey player and it's when you t you t touched on the girls thing or like or being dumb, like for some reason it's hockey players think it's cool to be the dumb guy. <laughs> I don't know why that's I don't know why that's a thing where it's like it's not cool to do well in school or it's not cool to have a brain about things or to actually be with your own thoughts for a little bit or you can't be by yourself. You always have to be with the boys yeah. or doing something social because yeah. you don't know how to think at all. Yeah, and it's actually not cool. Like treating girls like shit is actually not cool. No. It's not. It's funny sometimes. It's funny sometimes. I know that it's for, yeah, yeah. for a parent that no, no. thinks it's funny never. I, I'm just setting up the stage here. When you're with your 15 guys and you're you're confident because nothing will happen to you, no one's no one directly is going to say anything to you, and you can use someone's uh, use their their uh, use someone as their ex at their expense as a joke. It can be kind of funny. Yeah, it can be. It can be, but it's not. And it, it comes back because yes. the problem is you have one, you get one reputation yeah. and so many of these hockey guys, like I, now that I'm out of it and I'm all the guys that I played with are done playing or finishing up playing or whatever, the guys that were treating girls like shit or dumb, where they just didn't take yeah. any interest in having a brain about anything, yeah. or they had these leaky habits away from the rank. Like you said, like that is what controls their life now. So now, now the reputation as an adult going into the next phase of their life after hockey, they got not, they can't figure out what to do. Yeah. And these are the guys that you see, they do anything they can just to keep playing in whatever pro yeah. league they can find because they have nothing else that they can do. Yeah. You know, what, and sorry, go, no, go ahead. I'll let you finish. No, no, that was, that's, that's well, it. one of go the ahead. things like just, I mean, this is like, like getting ahead ahead, but one of the things that you look at when you look at your habits is, um, how you do anything is how you how you do how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you're, for example, people need to spend money on shit. So like I, I noticed Charlie, where he spends his money, he goes out for coffee, goes out with the boys for breakfast, you know, and, and eating out. Food, yeah. Okay. So that's you gotta do something. They're so busy playing hockey that they have to have some entertainment. Totally get it. Don't want them to stop. But without consciously thinking about the money, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you frivolously spend without thinking money here and this is what ian charlie's agent said it was school's not about school like when you're this age school's not about getting a, a a in geography and a b and whatever it's not about that it's about taking your life and managing it and, and doing well at it so that you can say like i've done the task 
so that when you get to the NHL, if that's if that's what happens, that you can stand in front of your microphone and explain something, that you can make good decisions, and that when you have, um, if you if you disregarded all the things that you like, you wanted to be dumb, like you said, when you if you play in the NHL and then the pressures of life come to you, and if you just the pressures of life is your habit as you reach in your pocket by breakfast, this, this. Well, now you have bigger bills and you have bigger options. That's how guys go broke. They have no brain, right? So without thinking of things, your habits are just going to go times 10, times 10, times 10. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyways. Well, even even if you will make it, this is the other thing too. It's not just for the day that you're not going to be a hockey player because some of these kids that are listening, that they might just sit and be like, well, I'm going to play in the NHL. So yep. what you're saying doesn't apply to me. And it actually still applies because of what you're saying. It applies more. At, at one, at a certain period, you're going to get, if you do play in the NHL, you're going to get your big fat paycheck. And if you're an idiot because yep. you didn't pay attention to anything about how to have a brain, yep. then that's going to cost you. Because yep. this is how you get these guys that yep. they have their thing their their vices that end up draining all their money or they don't know how to manage their money they don't have it together or they don't have to get or their relationships or their any other aspect of their life they don't know how to manage these things because they didn't take an interest in prioritizing these skills so i love that point because as a school guy that's my bias it's like school is not about school like reading is not about reading like like all these little habits that we talk about it's not about that one particular thing we're talking about it's that you take these skills out and you can apply them later yeah and for some reason in the hockey culture it's so acceptable to just not pay attention to any of those things well it's acceptable like when you play junior and you play college and college is included by the way yeah yeah, for sure because the bottom line is as much as people say we you know, we want you to be a well-rounded human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want them to be able to be good in school. And, and and colleges don't even do that. They say, here, you're, you're you, no, can't use that word. You don't care. You're good at hockey. Okay, you don't want to do your work. Okay, just sit in that room for 10 minutes. These guys will do it for you. And you can come out with, and we'll pretend that you got an A in marketing. Yeah. Oh, cool. And they want you to be a good hockey player. That's what they want. Yep. All the other stuff is, is bullshit. Yeah. So, um. But it will bite you in the ass, man. And, and that's the one thing I can say, and I've said this to Charlie, because he looks at me and goes, yeah, but you hated school. I go, yeah, I hated it, man. But, but I'm telling you, son, I'm telling you, and all the kids, the, the kids that are listening, it's not about school. What it's about is being disciplined and doing things that you don't like to do, all those little things that trickle out in life. Because once I decided, once I did, kind of chose not to be a hockey player anymore and to go into a different world of life and have my business, you know what got me? is I didn't have that discipline in school. I fight it to this day. And I and I and I I work on myself. But there's things that I sh- that I wish I would have done early. Habits that I w- wish I could break or broke early or never started and my life would be just better. Just better. I'm not saying uh um I'm not saying anything like drastic, but just better. Just more organized, more just better. Yeah, I no, I totally, I got it, man. Yeah. I totally get it. So uh, that's all I got. Do you got anything else you want to finish? Yeah, I've up got, on w- I've got uh, one more. It's kind of the same thing. So I, I wanted to touch on just jealousy and excuseitis. I call it excuse excuseitis. Excuseitis. Yeah, <laughs> it's a disease of having excuses for everything. Yeah, no, I did. I learned that in a book I read. It's called uh, da, 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 what's it by David Schwartz? Uh, forget, I forget what it's called now. David Schwartz. David Schwartz, and it's an old book. You gonna find it? Yep. Okay. The magic of thinking. Big. Magic of thinking big. Yeah. Boom. Great book, by the way. 1959. Old yeah, old old school book. Great book. Nice. Another real good book that it's very. Dale Carnegie, the uh, uh, how to win friends, oh, friends and influence people. Fantastic it's a phenomenal book. book. Yeah, great book. Very I broke. Easy to read. I broke one of the first rules. Sorry, I'll get back to this. One of the first rules I book broke the other day, that we talk about listening. Remember I told you someone called, uh, emailed me, you forwarded me the email, and I talked to the person yep. about agents and stuff. A really good conversation, really nice. I said, feel free to call me. So he, the, he called me, and I said, let me know. I said, go ahead and tell me your questions. And he said something, and then I went in, and I, and I yapped. Oh, did you? Ah. I was, I was disappointed right. in myself, and I know he's actually going to be listening. He says he listens to the podcast when they go to bed every night. And uh, I, I was going to 
send a message to him saying like I broke my rule. I talk too much. Yeah, yeah. But it's just when I get passionate about yeah, it, and I yeah. get going. But I have um, the same. But problem. anyways, one of the things is, is is shut your mouth and listen. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> it's a really good skill. But yeah. anyways, uh, excuseitis. Like people make excuses why they don't have success. Anyways, one of the worst habits you can have is having a jealous jealousy and excuses. So example is my dad was that person jealous and it's it's pretty disgusting to be honest with you because good, good word that's a good word no for disgusting it. Yeah, it it's is. disgusting yeah. because here's the thing like we were talking about one of the kids the other day that that just doesn't seem to like can't identify his game and instead of working on a b and c to get yeah. better it's always no but yeah but no but yes but excuses and then also, at the same time, there's kids on his team that when he talks about how they're no good, but he's actually not as good as them. And, 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 and it's a jealousy thing. And it's a wish that things would happen to me. So my first thing would be like, instead of being jealous, no, let's go with excuses first. Instead of making excuses, actually look in the mirror. If you want to be a hockey player, actually look in the mirror and start working on the thing. The thing that isn't fun. Like, that's what we said. It's always good to work on the things that you like to work on. That's actually not what we call hard work, right? Like we were talking about something the other day and we were saying like going to the gym to work hard is not actually working hard. That's only one part of working hard. It's working hard in the gym. It's like, do you actually work hard at everything? Excellence in everything. When you play, do you work hard? Do you, like the whole thing. So going to and doing something that you like to do, that's not hard work. That's just fun to the extreme. Where to, and, and not just necessarily fun, but you do enjoy the working out and the results and stuff. Well, it's like, sorry, just to cut you off, but to, it's okay. like to practice. Like my dad is really good at guitar. Yeah. It's like if he really, really, really keeps playing on his guitar, is that hard work? Does it count as hard work if it's the thing no. you love to do? No. No, it doesn't feel like work, no, man. That's right. Hard work is the thing you don't like to that's do right. and still doing it. Like that is what hard work is. That's you know? right. So like find your game. Find your game that you're deficient in that... And, and actually work at it. Don't yep. make excuses. Don't say, well, if my coach would put me with this guy and if, you know, whatever, my dog didn't have a sore paw, I'd be better. Like oh, all yeah. those things. So don't make excuses. Make reasons to get better and find reasons to get better. Excuses are freaking useless. They just make you feel good. No, they don't make you feel good. They give you a way out. Yeah, that's exactly right. It right. gives you a freaking exactly. way out. So excuses, don't let, don't, don't settle for any excuses. There are no excuses. If you want to be, uh, uh, like, let's say Charlie comes home this summer and, uh, let's just say, I'll, I'll say the, the coach says, uh, when you go home, I want you to work on your speed and whatever. If he comes home and says, yeah, but I'm fine. And if I played with this and that, I'd be like, no, you know, you, you need to work on this or else you'll never play in the NHL. So if you don't play, that's why you have, like, there's no excuses, man. Yep. Work on what you need to work on. It might, might take you one year, might take you one month, might take you 10 years, but work on it, work on the things that make you better. So no excuses. My dad was the king of that. Uh, especially my first year junior, he would, uh, he would always come up with, you know, I, I would have actual, I was, not intelligent enough or not mature enough to understand the process. So if I mentioned something to my dad, even though he went out for ice cream, never came back. <laughs> but when I did talk to him, it was always like, yeah, but you're better than this guy, this. And then it always had a, a more excuses than a pregnant nun, as I always say. And no, no, uh, no digging in the trenches and this is how you can fix it. Yep. You know? And the other thing that, uh, so excuses. And then the other thing is jealousy. Guys, the worst thing you can have is jealousy. Like, listen, man, some people are gifted. Some people are just really, really good. They just are. And you don't know what went behind that, right? But some some guys, like, let's just say, let's say Charlie's team, first round pick is Cameron Allen. Okay. He's really good, man. Like, he's just really good. And in my opinion... I don't, I don't know how he didn't go first overall in the draft. He went third. But in my opinion, like, he's just really good. To be jealous of that is like, the kid works hard, but to be jealous is just it's wrong. He's a good hockey player. And does that mean that he's going to be the best player in the whole world? I don't know. He might. He actually might. But 
what you can do with that instead of being jealous is find out how he got so good. Respect it. Like, respect it. The kid plays the, the game the right way all the time. Respect it and actually maybe learn from it. And, and, and then also maybe respect the fact that maybe, you you know, like some guys, like you, you can't be Mario Lemieux. He was just, he was good, man. He was just like, I don't know if it was just gifted, but seems like it. But don't be jealous. Be like respectful of it. And then, and then do what you can to get there. Because instead of being jealous, you can actually learn from people. Yeah. Right? And jealousy will just, I think Gretzky said that in that, in that uh, interview we talked about. He said, jealousy is the thing that, it destroys people, it destroys yeah. teams. Cancer, it's just, man. It's cancer. Yeah. It's cancer. And then what happens, like the habit would be in the room, like as we talk about the cancer of it, is it leaks out. Like if you're jealous of whatever guy, it leaks out in little things. You're going to say little things, little things, and hopefully one or two guys on your team are going to buy into that. Yeah, he's, coach loves him because, and then all of a sudden that becomes the theme and it's like you'd start not liking him as much because you think the coach is is golden boy and, it starts just going downhill, right? Yeah. It's like respect and just do your job. And that's where the mental toughs come. Just do your own job. Do your own thing. Work hard, man. Don't yeah. be jealous. Those those are two great ones to end on. I'm just going to throw two thoughts on the – start with the jealousy thing is, first of all, you being jealous of somebody else doesn't change your situation at all. At all. So let's say you have the Wayne Gretzky of whatever the domain is on that you have to work with every day. Yeah. So – you being jealous doesn't make you any closer to that. Yeah. So if anything, it's like you want that guy on your team, kind of. That's sure. a guy that can help pull you up or whatever. So it's, it does you no benefit. Yeah. And then the other side of it is there's enough for everyone to do well. So because, let's say, Cam Allen is one of the top rookie defensemen in the OHL right now, that doesn't mean there's not enough space for the number two guy. At all. Like there's still a number two guy. Someone has to be that guy too, yeah. right? Or so, just a different guy. That, well, that's what I was going to say next. Yeah. Is like, or it's a different role. So, like, if you look at Cam Allen went third overall, and wow, what a player, whatever, whatever. And I'm a forward. It's like, well, that's a, there's no comparison there. That's you know? right. So it's like him, what he's doing does not have any effect on your trajectory or what you can do. He's Zero. not. He's not taking an opportunity away from you. You know, you got to you carve out your own opportunity in your own way because everybody is a little bit different. And whatever the plan, even if it's even if you're a right winger and somebody else is a right winger, it's like yep. there's different. There's a different role that you're gonna have. It's not gonna yep. be exactly the same as the, the other guy or the guy that you feel like you're competing against. You know, yep. there's enough space for everybody. So that, that's what I want to say about the jealousy thing. And then, last thing on the on the excuses, I remember this was man, oh, like I remember this like yesterday. So this is like this is a good good story. So when I was in my last year of junior, it was. One of the worst times ever, probably at the start for me personally, right in like the middle of the year around winter, winter time, like right around December, January, whatever, where it's like nothing was going right for me, either hockey or life, like I remember. in general. Yeah, I remember. And I remember I was at my billet house and just like, I'm not saying I was like depressed or like suicidal or anything, but I was just like, <laughs> yeah, but I was just like, why is this so shit? And I remember thinking about my own behavior to that point, I was just kind of reflecting on getting to the point I got to. And it's like, how did I get here? It was like, I was doing that. Like, how am I here right now? How could this be happening? Like, why me? How could this happen to me? The why me thing, right? How is this happening to me? And I started to think about my own personality. And a lot of the things that I would do is just that. It was never exactly my fault. Or like, I would take pretend ownership or whatever other fill in the blank with whatever excuse I was making or who I was blaming or whatever. And when I reflect back on it now, it's like some of that was kind of valid, but there was a ton of it where it was like, I could have done something else then I wasn't doing it. So if, maybe if I would have just done those things, that would have solved all my issues and there would have been no problem. So whether it was the being super sure of myself about everything when I shouldn't have been at all, thinking I was doing the right things when I wasn't, yeah. whatever my attitudes were, whatever my bad habits yeah. were away from the ice, like all that kind of stuff. And I remember thinking at the time, like, how could this, how could this be happening? And it was only a couple of years later that I was listening to Jocko and he kind of put it in words for me, what I was thinking at the time. This is when I started to kind of change my yep. path, so to speak. Not that I was doing anything crazy, but just getting in a better headspace about things. And he was saying the same thing about himself when he was in the military. He was like, I was trying to get a promotion to be a, 
whatever commanding officer kind of thing. And I wasn't getting it. They kept passing me over. And he was doing the same kind of thing. Like, well, this guy, this, this guy, that I should be doing that. I'm better than him in this yeah. way, whatever. And the way he put it into words was so good. He just goes, I, I finally, one day I, I sat and I thought about it and I said to myself, if you're so smart, why aren't you winning? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was exactly, yeah. that was exactly what I smacked myself and yeah. without putting it in those words at the time. That's exactly yeah. what I yeah. started to hit myself in the face with at the time. I was like, if you are so smart and you got it all figured out, why are you not winning? You know, and yeah. a, that's a that's a very important question that a lot of kids that are starting to get up into their higher levels of hockey career. If you think things aren't going your way, or if you can't understand why this guy's getting an opportunity and yeah. you're, and all this kind of stuff, ask yourself that question. Yeah. If you think that you're doing everything right, yeah. and it's just not going yeah. your way, yeah. Ask yourself that question. Yeah. Like if you got it all figured out and whatever, then how come you're not winning? at whatever your winning is to you, whatever yeah. that means to you, why isn't it working yeah. for you? You know, yeah. and that's, that can kind of be the antidote to excuse-itis that you're talking about. So, yeah. Well, yeah, you look at like, from my perspective, uh, you know, like a lot of people look at me and they go, you got the best life, man. And I go, I do, but you're so lucky. And I go, I'm not, I'm lucky. Like I'm fortunate. I'm not lucky because, you know, you said it to someone the other day, it's, for 20 years, I got up at five in the morning to go on the ice with people and skate dead and cold, and chase it around and build the business. I was willing to do a lot of people weren't. And it's given me a pretty good life. I love my life. I can look at someone else, a lot of several people that I look at with businesses. I could say, man, that's, you know, you can look at it almost like a jealousy thing, right? And you can't be jealous because you don't know what these people did to get that successful. You know, they, maybe they took that money and they, you know, they lived a, a really humble, modest life for a while until they could afford to just invest and make all kinds of money. Like you just don't know what it took to get to that place, you know? And the last thing I'll say about this, and, and it's a really good statement as well, is that you're going to get what you, to you're going to get what you tolerate in life. If you tolerate anything that you get, that's, that's, that's what you're going to get. Like if you can tolerate missing a practice or missing a workout or not doing your video or, and not doing the work to get somewhere, then that's exactly what you deserve. You're going to get what you tolerate because you're putting up with it. It's you got, you, if, you're, if your tolerance level is zero, that you want to get to here, from here to there, no matter what. And if your tolerance is zero, you will get there. But if your tolerance is, ah, well, I don't feel like doing this and I don't feel like doing that. It's too hard. This guy got a break and I didn't. Then you've told yourself that it's not going to happen. You'll get exactly what you tolerate. And it's and I look at my life and what, you know, I got what I tolerate in in every every aspect. You know, when you actually examine that, you know, why why am I why am I why do I work out and still carry a little bit of body fat? You know, right? Because I tolerate being yep. able to drink beers on the weekend. That's why. And eating a tray of brownies last night. <laughs> but you tolerate that. If you don't tolerate that, then you get different results. So like, what do you want? And then whatever you tolerate will shrink that down to your possibilities of getting that. But yeah. anyways, don't be jealous, man. It's just, it's awful. It's awful. That's, yeah. that's what I'm going to end with. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I think that was, that was great. So um, we'll leave it there yeah. for the next one. Yeah.